Thank you very much, uh, Madam Speaker, and uh, uh, privileged to rise to speak on uh, on Bill 10. Um, I just want to make a few comments, address some of the questions that have been raised uh, by uh, some of my uh, colleagues on this side, also address uh, uh, something I think I heard uh, from uh, the other side as well. Um, you know, generally speaking, the Alberta Party uh, Caucus is supportive of uh, renewable energy. Uh, we're supportive of uh, uh, programs and initiatives that make uh, not just renewable energy but uh, home uh, energy efficiency improvements more affordable to Albertans. These, these are, are, I think, uh, should be seen generally as good things. Uh, of course, we always have to be uh, prudent and cautious in terms of how we go about uh, implementing such programs, and, and I, I do, with this particular bill, have some questions. Uh, my general inclination, I think the general inclination of our caucus uh, would be likely to support the bill, but uh, again, we do uh, have a few questions and want to dig into a few things. But just in terms of first principles and, and, the, and the fundamentals and basics of the bill, um, I, I would note that uh, what this bill does is simply enable municipalities to choose to pass a bylaw. Uh, that would establish a property assessed clean energy program or a PACE program. Uh, that does not compel uh, any municipality to do so. Uh, and in terms of uh, the question that was asked by Karsten Tabor Warner about whether uh, this is something that is uh, a result of uh, demand from Albertans or just something the government dreamed up uh, all on its own, this is something, as I understand it, that is a result of consultation with municipalities, with uh, uh, home builders uh, with Albertans uh, who have said, you know, this is the kind of thing that they'd like to see. Uh, so uh, I take the government at their word that, in fact, municipalities are, are asking for this. Uh, this is not uh, a, a unique program that is uh, first ever conceived of here in Alberta. In fact, we're by some measures a little bit late to the game on this uh, and uh, catching up in, in, in implementing uh, such legislation. In terms of impact on the municipalities themselves, uh, one of the things I think uh, is important to note in the bill is that Energy Efficiency Alberta uh, could administer the program on behalf of a municipality, if the municipality so chose. And I think that's uh, an area where, uh, for smaller municipalities, they uh, may find that compelling. They may not find that they have the expertise sufficient internally uh, or would choose to want to ramp that up, uh, spend the money to do so, so I'm uh, pleased to see that. Uh, you know, in terms of the model itself, uh, it's not unique. Uh, when uh, my neighbours approached us and said, "Would you, we thought maybe it might be a nice idea to, to uh, pave our back alley and, and make it uh, asphalt instead of, uh, instead of uh, gravel, uh, reduce the dust, kids have somewhere to play, uh, we had the option to pay for that through our property tax over time, as opposed to having a significant capital outlay in the beginning. Uh, in, in so doing, uh, we uh, pay a small bit of interest in doing that, and uh, it comes out of our property taxes every month. Uh, it also, uh, I would uh, strongly suggest, enhances the value of, of our home and all of the homes uh, on either side of the block. I look at this program as something quite similar. Um, also would note that it isn't just solar. Uh, it, eligible improvements under Section 7 of the bill include, yes, solar power, but upgraded insulation, windows and doors, high efficiency heating and cooling systems. Uh, it's uh, more than just solar panels uh, on, on the roof. Um, and, you know, one of the, the um, questions, I believe it was the min uh, member for Airdrie had asked, um, well, let's say that there's a foreclosure, heaven forbid, uh, what happens if uh, the, the solar panels that were on the roof uh, go uh, mysteriously in the middle of the night? Well, the same thing that would happen if uh, someone were to foreclose on their home and decide to take uh, fittings and fixtures that are part of the house. Uh, the, uh, uh, if you took all the interior doors with you when you foreclosed, I can assure you that the uh, bank would not look upon that very favorably and would come after you for that. Uh, and I can only imagine that the same thing would apply for, for solar panels or your upgraded windows or, or anything else. So I would uh, say that that as an objection to this bill is a uh, spurious one. Um, and speaking of uh, the UCP, um, I would ask them what is their plan for uh, renewable energy. What is their plan uh, as it relates to climate in any way? Frankly, aside from uh, uh, doing their version of crossing their fingers and hoping it isn't really a problem. And, and I would suggest that uh, this is the sort of thing that, that as a government, uh, we ought to be considering ways of uh, reducing uh, uh, energy costs, reducing uh, 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 heat leakage from our homes in our 10-month uh, winters we seem to suffer here. Uh, whatever we can do to insulate our buildings, uh, both commercial and residential, in a more efficient and effective way, uh, should be seen as a good thing. So, to the degree this bill 
uh, achieves that. Uh, I'm, I'm certainly quite uh, quite interested in, 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 in supporting these sorts of initiatives, in fact, if they do meet those objectives. So when I go uh, and I tackle a bill, the first thing I do is I look for data, look for the evidence. Um, and uh, uh, found a, a very interesting study out of the United States um, done by uh, the director of Housing Finance Policy Center at the Urban Institute and a senior financial methodologist at the same institution. Uh, they did a study and, and determined that uh, after taking a financing costs into account, the return on a PACE program for residential uh, homeowners in the United States ranged from $199 all the way up to $8,882. Uh, in their words, that is, the homeowner recovered more than their investment. And the other very interesting and noteworthy thing, we think about, you know, what if we were to want to sell our house, let's do a kitchen reno, let's renovate the bathroom, that's going to increase the value of the house. Uh, they compared those types of renovations, other home improvements like kitchen and bathroom remodeling. Recent studies showed that homeowner recovers only 60% or so of that cost. Uh, so uh, the data that I'm seeing tells me that a PACE program is far superior to other renovations that uh, homeowners would, uh, would undertake. So it tells me there's likely to be a positive uh, return uh, on, uh, um, on, on on that investment. And the other thing I would say is that these types of programs, although they have existed in the United States for some time, are still relatively new. So uh, uh, mortgage uh, lenders uh, and home buyers are just learning how exactly to value these sorts of things in, uh, in, in the property market. Uh, and what the, this study concludes is that perhaps there may be, uh, in fact, increased value beyond what is um, currently understood, uh, that it's more likely that this would go up than down in the future in terms of value. And I think that's uh, intuitive in the sense that if we were to ask ourselves 10 years in the future, are home buyers 10 years in the future more or less likely to want an energy efficient home? Are they more or less likely to want a home that already has solar panels installed and a means of paying for that through the property tax? My gut feel uh, tells me that that's more likely. This uh, study would suggest the same thing. So uh, I do have some questions, of course, uh, uh, devil in the details. Uh, and when we have a bill that would uh, put uh, regulation uh, as the first step. We'll write some regulation and let you know in the future. That always uh, raises some questions for me. Um, I, I wonder, uh, Municipal Affairs uh, is particularly good at tabling bills, doing substantive consultation and coming back and passing the legislation. That's what we're doing with Bill 8. Um, I would wonder if that may have been a model they could have adopted for Bill 10. Um, I would perhaps give them a pass on this. Uh, if there's perhaps some urgency in, in seeing this move forward, uh, we may not necessarily want to delay, so I could understand that. The other concern I have is when we're doing these sorts of things, and we, we, we want to uh, create a situation where Albertans use less electricity in particular, uh, and, uh, and, and find some, some, some savings there. As this government moves to a capacity market, less and less and less of Albertans' electricity bills will be cost of energy, and more and more and more of those bills will be fixed for uh, administrative charges, for uh, transmission. The way the capacity market is being dressed up as transmission uh, could mean that, in fact, there's really no incentive to shut the lights off because your electricity bill is going to be what it is. Uh, the cost of electricity has been capped at 6.8 cents, uh, which is a shell game to, uh, to Albertans because they uh, see that number, but of course all of us uh, as taxpayers will ultimately foot the bill for that and there's substantial concern there. So the question is, will we actually be in a situation in two and three and five years down the road where it even matters whether we have solar panels because the cost of electricity is so high that we're bumping up against that cap for the next four years, it really doesn't make a difference. Uh, that's a real, real concern that, that, that would be a potential um, uh, unintended consequence, I uh, hope unintended consequence, uh, of the changes that are going on in the electricity market, but would actually serve to potentially undercut the value of a bill like this. Why would we bother installing solar panels when, frankly, it makes no difference in terms of our electricity bill? Uh, that's, uh, and, and would make no difference in terms of the electricity generated uh, on the grid, uh, and therefore make no difference to, uh, to, to, to uh, carbon emissions. Um, so the changes that this bill are bringing in and the opportunities that present do need to be seen holistically and unfortunately because of the uh, uh, real hash that this government's made of the electricity market generally, 
the good intentions of this bill, and frankly, the, the good mechanics, this, this seems like something that really can work, may not actually serve the purpose that this government intends because of other mistakes they've made, because of other paths they've chosen that are frankly uh, ill-advised and unnecessary. It's a shame because there's other ways of ramping down coal, there's other ways of putting more renewables on the grid, there's other ways of encouraging natural gas uh, electricity generation that didn't involve literally a billion dollars or more uh, of lost uh, money to uh, taxpayers of additional money that this government's had to borrow, and it's a real shame. It didn't have to be that way, and here we are. So I hope that uh, that, that uh, is not the, the case, uh, and uh, you know, given what we know now, uh, I can tell you the Alberta Party Caucus is inclined to support the bill, but we certainly do have some questions. Thank you, Madam Speaker.